What's going on, everybody? Good afternoon. We are here on Wednesday. Seahawks are practicing. We should get some more information from them in not too long here. Going to get some kind of an injury report up, I hope. So we'll know more in a few hours. But this video is not going to be about that. This video is going to be about the long term, the much longer term, like next year, next season. Because yesterday, this uh, image got posted to several significant football NFL X accounts, and it got passed around among a lot of football fans, and it caught the attention of Seahawks fans in a negative way. <clears throat> so I want to set this straight here. I want to establish something when it comes to the 2025 Seattle Seahawks. So what this image is, is like Dove Kleiman says here in his tweet, 2025 cap space for every NFL team. You can see that there are a few teams with over 100 million. One team has over 130 million. Uh, you can see some of these teams with like 70 million, 60 million, 50 million. And then you start getting down to this right side where it's more like, okay, now you're getting down to like 40, 30, 20, sub 20. Now, oh, yeah, there are three teams in the NFL that currently have negative cap space for 2025. The Seahawks are one of them. They are currently, according to this image, which I do believe is roughly correct. It may not be precisely correct, but if they're off by even a million dollars or two million dollars, it doesn't really change the point here. Point is, the Seahawks don't have money. They are one of three teams that currently is negative on cap space in 2025. Little more than 300 grand in the red. The Browns at 4.6 in the red. And the Saints just, you know, forget about it, right? Um, 81 million in the red. I think they were able to relieve some of that with the Kamara extension, but not, uh, not nearly enough. But we're not talking about the Saints. We're talking about the Seahawks. So people were wondering, how did this happen? What's going on? How are we going to do anything next year? How are we going to keep some of these players? How are we going to sign free agents? How are we going to sign rookies? So <clears throat> I want to talk about that because this number, and I think a lot of you guys generally understand this, doesn't mean much of anything right now. But how much does it not mean? Because we know that ultimately the Seahawks are going to have much more cap space than this simply because they have to, like they literally have to get under the cap or else I imagine the league would, I don't know, swing a giant hammer mallet at us until we do. But how do we get there? And can we get far enough to where we can take care of our business next offseason? Because, you know, we could cut a couple million from the cap easily, but a couple million is not going to pay for your draft class. It's not going to pay for your free agents. It's not going to pay for anything, really, with the way the NFL is right now. So how did we get here and what do we do to get out of it? Let's go to the 2025 cap table <clears throat> for the Seahawks. I'm using Spotrack because I think they have accurate information. Over the cap does not, to my knowledge. So I am going to use Spotrack. I know it's a little bit ugly, although I am starting to get used to it. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit and make things at least a little bit bigger. So... This is the 2025 active roster cap sorted by cap hit. Let's go down the list here. Let's take a look at some of these biggest cap hits, okay? Geno Smith, number one, $38.5 million cap hit. He's not going to be here on that cap hit. I can pretty confidently tell you that. One of two things is going to happen. Either Geno Smith signs an extension or he's gone. <clears throat> I don't think there's any scenario where he's actually here on this cap hit because it's too much and quarterbacks typically do not play on the last year of their deal. It doesn't happen that often, um, especially a quarterback that a team clearly seems interested in building around long term. Um, when a quarterback does play on the last year of his deal, it's usually, usually an indication that he wants out and he's just trying to expedite, expedite that process. Or things are really dysfunctional in the organization because they don't know if they want to commit to this guy or not. But I'm very confident that either the team 
want Geno Smith to be their franchise quarterback, and they extend him, which is going to get this cap hit way down because it's going to be a long-term deal that's going to spread the money out over future years rather than just having all this cap hit in 2025, or he's going to be gone, traded, or cut, and this dead cap hit will still apply. But as you can see, the savings are big. It's, what, 20... <clears throat> yeah, it's 25 million. So that frees up a lot of money either way. I think that the amount of money you free up is going to be maybe not quite 25 million on an extension, but it would be a lot. So forget about this cap number. It's going way down one way or the other. Okay, next guy on this list, DK Metcalf, 31.9. Let's call it $31.9 million cap hit next year. He's not going to be on that cap hit in 2025. I'm really confident about that. And unlike Gino, where I think there's a possibility of another move, I don't think so here. I think that when the Seahawks restructured Metcalf's contract in the offseason before the season started, it was done with the understanding that we know we're going to extend this guy. So we, uh, we're just going to go ahead and play around with his cap number because we needed a little bit more money. And we don't think it's going to hurt us because we plan on this guy being a Seahawk for a while. So when you factor that in with the fact that the savings are not even significant if you trade him or cut him, if you trade or cut him, you're still paying him $21 million next year. I think it's very clear that the plan is to extend him, get this cap hit down significantly, and make him part of your long-term plans. Maybe you give him the four-year extension, maybe it's a three-year extension, but whatever it is, it's going to reduce this cap hit by a pretty decent amount. Because there, there will still be some bonus money left that you're going to have to count against your cap as well, but you should still have significant savings. But either way, I really don't think Metcalf is going to be playing on a $31.9 million cap hit in 2025. Okay, third guy on this list, Tyler Lockett. Do about $31 million, Call it $30.9 next year. There's no way he's back playing for $31 million on 2025. So far more likely is he retires. The dead cap hit, according to Spotrack, is $4 million. So we save right then and there $27 million almost. That that takes care, that alone would basically take care of your draft class, UDFA, and practice squad, and injury buffer, and trade buffer, by the way. There's also a possibility that he wants to keep playing, but we cut him, so he goes somewhere else, in which case $4 million would still be the dead cap. And there is a scenario where he comes back on a reduced deal because he wants to retire a Seahawk. I personally believe that Tyler Lockett will retire. I think that's the most likely outcome here. But I think there are other options on the table, but none of them involve him playing on this cap hit. There is no way Tyler Lockett is going to be back on an almost $31 million cap hit, given how old he's going to be and his capabilities at this point. Okay, so that's your top three. And right then there, Let's say extend Geno, extend Metcalf, Lockett retires. Between those three moves, that's easily $50 million you're freeing up. You could probably do more if you wanted to. Again, you can custom make these contracts for your purposes, but my early guess would be you're freeing up around $50 million just from making moves with those three guys. So right then and there, we're actually in good shape, but... Let's keep it going here. Leonard Williams, second year of a three-year deal. There might not be a lot you can do here. You can always convert the base to bonus, of course. You don't have to do it. If you did, you'd be talking about freeing up what? Something like te um, almost $10 million. You don't need to do it, and it would hurt you pretty badly in 2026, but it's an option. Draymond Jones, let's just skip over to him. Let's say we leave Leonard Williams' contract as is. Let's say we just let the Leonard Williams contract play out. Maybe he's not worth $29.2 million for a year, but he's still a really good player, and maybe we have to take it on the chin a little bit. And we can afford to take it on the chin, because Draymond Jones is next up here making over $25 million against the cap next year. You think there's any way Draymond Jones is back here making $25.6 million? 
Maybe if he plays every single game the rest of the year like he played against the Falcons. Short of that, though, I think you're eating the dead cap, and that's not fun. You're eating 14 million dead, 14.1 million dead, but you need those savings. That is a savings of, what, 11.5 million? A little more than 11.5 million? You got to have it. So you're not losing that much in the player. Sorry, as of right now, he's a guy who shows up once a month and just doesn't have the strength to really hold up in the middle consistently. But that's $11.5 million that you're probably counting on right now. Uchenna Nwosu next on the list at 21 and a half. If he doesn't come back healthy later this year and show that he can still be a really good player, yeah, I think there is a tough call that has to be made here. It sucks. You wanted to get one more year out of him for sure. But there's definitely a scenario where his $21.5 million cap hit turns into a $13 million dead cap hit. And you say, well, it hurts, but we need the $8.5 million more than we need Uchenna Nwosu trying to get healthy and trying to be a productive player in the NFL again. So it really depends on what Nwosu does later this year. But there is a very realistic scenario where he is not a Seahawk next year and we're saving the $8.5 million. Noah Fant. The way Noah Fant is playing overall right now, do you think there's any way he's back on a $13.5 million deal next year? I doubt it. Unless he starts really stepping it up here and looking a little bit better and being a more important part of this offense, he can be gone and that saves you $9 million, $4.5 million dead. Right? Okay. Witherspoon can't do much there yet, but Rayshon Jenkins, uh, if Rayshon doesn't look good when he comes back from the injury later this year, I seriously doubt he's coming back on a 7.9 million cap hit when you can save almost 5.5 million by cutting him, just 2.5 million dead to let him go. I think that's going to be a relatively easy one unless he comes back really strongly. Nothing to do with Cross yet, but Roy Robertson Harris, 6.6 6 million. It's not guaranteed at all. You cut him, you eat no dead money, you just save the 6.6. And I seriously doubt we're bringing him back on 6.6. .6. Maybe we bring him back on a reduced deal, but there's no way he's sticking on a $6.6 .6 million cap hit when the whole thing is non-guaranteed, right? Can't do much with Love, can't do much with Myers. George Fant, he's almost certainly going to be gone. That saves you $3.8 million, right? I think you might extend Michael Dixon. He's getting to the end of his contract. You might extend him. That'll save you a little bit of money. And now you're down to the guys who really aren't even making that much. You're getting down to guys who are making $4 million or less. There's not much you can do down there. There's not much you can worry about down there. You've taken care of everything. Like, if you really wanted to, you could probably get to about $100 million in cap space without losing anything that would devastate you. So this number, don't worry about this right now. This will be taken care of in the offseason. Some of it might even be taken care of now. but. You go through the numbers here and you do the math and you look at these um, extensions you can do and you look at some of these reasonable cuts, you could probably free up close to $100 million. You'd have to lose guys like Fant and Jenkins and Roy Robertson Harris and Fant and some people would be sad about that, Draymond Jones. I don't know how many people would be sad about that, but you'd lose some players that have some value, but you'd also be freeing up so much cap space, I don't think anybody would be upset about that. Now, let me be clear here at the end of this video. Does this mean we're going to be big spenders in free agency next year? No, absolutely not. Maybe we'll be modest spenders, but the money that we're going to free up, all this money that I'm talking about, you know, maybe you free up $20 million on a Geno extension. Maybe you free up $10 million on the Metcalf extension, freeing up $27 million on the Lockett retiring. That money is getting earmarked for extensions because we have so many good young players, right? We need to extend Charles Cross. His cap hit is going to go up from the $6.8 million next year if we extend him. We need to extend a player like a uh, um, a, a Boye Mafe, 2.7 next year. You extend him, that number is going to go up pretty significantly. Uh, Reek Woolen, he's making peanuts next year right now against the cap. If we extend him, it'll be way more than $1.2 million. It's not even $1.2 million. Um, maybe you extend Ken Walker. I don't think we will, but if you do, that cap hit is going to go up. So that's what that money is for. And then the next year you're extending Witherspoon, you're extending Derek Hall. So don't think this means we're going to go out and spend hundreds of millions of dollars, but we can definitely free up enough money to do our business.
See you guys later. Go Hawks.